Extremes breed extremes. This kind of environment spawns the best of the worst in a man. It's always reminded me of the Brownsville section of New York, the birthplace of some fine writers, doctors, attorneys, and of Murder Incorporated. Hi, Frank. Hello, Nino. School tonight, huh? Every night, Jim. Cup all day, school all night. Gotta give you credit, Frank. Save it for when I pass the bar exam. Hey, Frank, wait a minute. Hey, Gumba. I need a favor. Hey, no, when are you going to get a job? <laughs> I got a good lead tomorrow. But uh, the suits and the cleaners, you know? How much? A couple of bucks should do it. I get the job, I pay back everything I owe you. All right. Hot or cold, I need this back next week, you hear? Oh, sure, sure. You're a real friend, Frank. Yeah. Good night. Not on it. Get it. They say that walking is the best exercise for the body. I find it also stimulates the mind. But this particular morning, as on many over the years, I was not out just for a walk. I had a specific destination. I'd been summoned. A call I couldn't refuse. Coming in here, do so quietly. Don't stand out there bellowing. (laughs) 
I don't want to lose the only decent help I've ever had. It's because you clatter in here at impossible hours. Tally Shaughnessy he wouldn't leave you for a night in a white charger. Anyway, she'll be asleep for another hour. I suppose you gentlemen would be wanting something hot to drink. <laughs> Sleeping indeed. Huh? Oh, tell me how a body could sleep when you let anyone who passes by know that the door's open. <laughs> Mr. Morris, you must be another one of them who never closes an eye. You'll be wanting cream and sugar if I remember. Yeah, thanks, Sally. The female tongue is the perfect courtroom weapon. Here. Here, read the morning paper. You didn't have Sally give me that urgent message just to get me down here to read the morning paper. Oh, of course I didn't, but, uh, you know, uh, I haven't seen you for, uh, well, it's been... It's been all of six days. I'm a lonely man, Herbert. You are an old tyrant. You said the message was urgent. Oh, read the paper. Wait a minute. Crotty, isn't that the young cop that works out of Weston's office? Oh, he does? Hey, let me see that. Well, so he does. What time did Weston call you? Oh, couldn't have been any more of that. Now look here, Herbert. Aren't you ashamed, stooping to that kind of trickery? You could have gotten the same result by coming right out with your little plot. Why me? Why get me involved? Frank Crotty's on the police force because of me. I sponsored him. If I go to bat for him, it'll only make things worse for him and for me, too. Anyone can make a mistake, even you. Just a moment, Herb. There's more. Crotty was once a young hooligan around town. All the officers knew him. He ran around with a gang called the Silver Knights. Everybody had a mark lousy, but I thought there was something worth saving. Yes, go on. He wants to be a lawyer, more than anything else in the world. He saves every penny he can get for his education. He won't even go bowling with the guys. He sacrificed everything, even marriage, to be a lawyer. That gets me right here. Oh, uh, don't care. A man doesn't steal for an education. Supposing he does have this great desire. You admit he needs money. Yes, but he didn't do this, I'm sure. How'd you connect him with it? Crotty turned himself in. When he got up in the morning, there were four bullets missing from his gun. His gun had been fired. When he reported to me, he didn't know anything about the killing. I took his gun down to ballistics, and the bullets matched. If he was guilty, it could be a smart move to turn himself in this way. Could be, but he didn't do it. Oh, Weston, I've got so much work on my desk, it'll take me a month to get out from under. You're my friend, Herb. I need your help. Don't you see? A cop has been killed. Three this month. Every officer in the police force is involved in this. I can work through you, but I can't go on record. Can we see Crotty now? It might have helped Crotty's case if the police investigation had turned up evidence of accomplices. However, nothing pointed to more than a one-man operation. Oh, Lieutenant Weston. Oh, hello, Diane. Miss Diane Powell, Mr. Herbert Maris. Miss Powell? Diane is Frank Crotty's girl. I want to help him. That's what Mr. Maris is here for. He's a lawyer. We'll do everything we can to help him if he's innocent. He is innocent. Go home, Diane. We'll let you know as soon as we can. But, but Frank didn't do it. I know him better than anybody. He... Well... He didn't. Please, Diane. Coming, Counselor? We'll use the lawyer's room. I want to talk to him alone. That's all right by me. Thanks, officer. My name is Maris, Herbert Maris. Oh, oh, yes, a friend of Lieutenant Weston's. That's right. He told me quite a tale. What have you got to say? What else can I say? It's all in the report. Well, I'd like to hear it in your own words. Uh, sit down, will you? Thank you. I, uh, I came off duty and I went to class. Got home about midnight. Usually I take the bus, but that night I walked. Why? I was broke. Go on. Well, the next morning when I got dressed, I, I noticed my gun had been fired. I reported it to Lieutenant Weston, and here I am. 
A police officer is supposed to carry his gun at all times, even off duty. Yes, I know. I broke the rule. Look, I felt silly sitting in a classroom wearing my gun. I'll have to face department charges on that. You'll have to face charges on more than that, Crotty. I understand you want to be a lawyer. Yeah, a lawyer. Mister, I was a regular Abe Lincoln. I wanted the law so bad. So look where I am now. And I also understand you need money. More than you could ever know, Mr. Maris. But I didn't rob for it, and I didn't kill for it. Night watchman's here. Lieutenant, you know how tough it is to make an identification from one of these lineups. That's the best we can do for now, Crotty. McGrew to have the detectives come in for the lineup. How about you, Maris? You want to stand up with me? Sure. Good. Would you gentlemen mind taking your coats off, please? Coats off, please, gentlemen. Magruder. Bring the night watchman in here. Mr. Carey, we've brought you here for purposes of identification. If one of these men is one who assaulted you the night before last, and point him out to me. Yes, sir. But I got to get used to these lights. You know, you give me an awful bump. Yes, I understand. Hands out of pockets and stand up straight, please. He's the same size, same coloring. I think he's the one. You think? Aren't you sure? Well, just as sure as I'll ever be. Thanks, you can go now. Lights, Magruder. Take Cody back to his cell. Thank you, gentlemen. This isn't conclusive, you know. He said he wasn't sure. You know how these identifications. Let's see you some sorry. What for? I was positive he was innocent. I don't apologize. He is. Forget it, Herb. I'd like to believe he was innocent, too, but I can't. Not after this. So you're going to quit on him now? No, I just made a mistake, that's all. I was wrong. I've given it all the time I'm going to. You've given it less than 36 hours. That's plenty. Everybody around here is thinking I told you so. Waiting for me to bail the kid out of this mess. Well, I'm not going to do it. Crotty gets the same treatment as anybody else. You're a tough cop, Weston. Too tough sometimes. But you're fair, and because you're fair, you're being toughest on yourself. But don't take it out on Crotty and this girl of his. All right, Herb, what else can I do? Do some gum chewing. Ask questions. That's what a cop's supposed to do. Walk around and ask questions, isn't it? Send some men into Crotty's neighborhood. Now, look. Crotty's gun could have been stolen, just as he says. Lots of people down there knew all about his habits. I've got men gum chewing down there right now, Herb. Don't worry. I'll do what I can. So will I. Hello, Lieutenant Weston. Yes, sir. I'll be right up. That was the Captain Hurricane heading my way. Despite his problems, Weston was true to his word. A lot of good man hours were spent combing the neighborhood where Frank Crotty lived. We didn't come up with anything specific, not right away. One thing in Crotty's favor, his neighbors liked him. Hard worker, clean, nice guy, good cop. It seemed unanimous, but it wasn't. Same guy, Arnie. The same guy that's been around with the cops all day. Listen, Nino, so what? So forget it. I don't want to think about it. Maybe he knows something. What could he know? Something. 
The place is jumping with cops. We almost got grabbed three, four times. Cops don't like it when another cop gets shot. Oh, I wish it didn't happen, Nino. Like it was all over. That's what I wish. All right, keep wishing. Arnie, look. I'm talking to Cardi's girl. Yeah. She don't like us at all. What'll he tell her? It won't be good. We better go talk to him. Are you buggy or something? No, smart. Like if we know what he knows, we can figure a move. We can't keep hiding. Anyway, we got a right. We're friends of Crotty's. Ain't we? Come on. Hi, Diane. Hi. Hello, Nino. Frank okay? No, he isn't. Not at all. Friends of Frank? He thinks so. But you don't. Frank will have to like my friends, so I try to like his. It's the way our marriage will work. Well, I think a sentiment like that entitles you to a bite of food on the house. Thanks. I haven't had a thing to eat since this whole thing started. Dinner, madame? Get Jimmy. For what? What are we gonna do? Nino, I Shut don't... Shut up. We gotta fix it so this jerk don't come back here. Then he'll know it's us. He won't even see us. Now listen, we gotta do something to stop this guy. The cops will quit in a couple of days. They always do if they got a good patsy. But this guy's no cop. Now do what I tell you. Two more years of law school new wife to support, and all on a policeman's pay. I'm sure we can manage. Was well, Frank sure? That could make a lot of men desperate. Now, just a minute, Mr. Maris. Didn't he have a moment of panic? Didn't he suddenly wonder how you'd both do it? No, not once. Oh, come on. You're trying to make me say something to hurt Frank. Diane, he could have fallen just this once. A lot of policemen have. You can... You can drop dead, Mr. Maris. Diane, just a minute. You know, I envy Frank. You're going to make him a very good wife. Come on. Let me walk you home. Thanks. Thanks for walking me home. And thanks, too, for wanting to help Frank. The things you told me tonight wouldn't be much help in court. But they were a lot of help to me. Thanks. Good night. Good night. the sergeant route him out and then let me in to see Frank Crowdy while I waited. Then anybody might have gotten your room while you were out. I always locked the door. Well, those locks are so antique, any skeleton keep might open them. Yeah, I guess so. Everybody around there seems to know your schedule. Do they know your habits, your timetable? I was in and out about the same time every day. Are you all right? Yeah, I... Just feeling dizzy for a minute. One of them kicked me last night. Who wears combat boots around there? Everybody did a few years ago. It's part of the uniform. I wore them myself before I grew up and joined the force. 
He really ran that turf. Turf? The neighborhood. That was our territory. What about now? Who wears them? Lots of the guys. Who? Well, Nino and Arnie Basilici wear them. They, uh, they know I go to school. They could even know I wasn't carrying my gun. But they, they wouldn't do it. They're friends of mine. Well, we've got to come up with more than a pair of boots on the neighborhood pump. Crowdy's gun, the motive, the identification, the timing. These are facts. Facts are like numbers. They can be rigged, and you're smart enough to know it. These boots are the don't, one thing. Don't give me with the boots, Herb. There's a million of them out in the pavements right now. Half the punks in his neighborhood wear them. Crotty was a trained cop. If he's going to turn bad, he's not going to be clumsy about it. Why would he use his own gun and then turn it over to you? Like you said. Because he thought it was the smart thing to do. What about the Basilici brothers? They knew his habits, where he lived, when he was there. Crotty told me that they probably knew he didn't have his gun with him when he went to school. That alone could get him thrown right off the force. All right, where would I? Basilici, brother. Yeah. All right. Look, I know that somebody didn't want this investigation in that neighborhood. Now, the only people I saw with combat boots were the Basilici brothers. Anything else? I thought Crotty was a friend of yours. We need facts, not guesswork. Why don't you go home and get yourself some sleep? I've got a city to mind. Magruder! Get me the address on Nino and Anno Basilici. Have my car brought around the front. Give me Nino Basilici's address, will you? No, no, I just want to talk to him. Maybe I can learn something. Thanks. What's the matter? You can't knock? Yeah, what gives? You walked in. You want something, mister? I understand you're friends of Frank Crowdy's. I wanted to see if you could help him. Yeah. Well, there's nothing we can do to help Frank. He's a nice guy. But there's nothing we can do. You see, uh, somebody wants to stop me from making this investigation. What are you looking at? I got beat up last night by three hoodlums. With boots like these? And you think we did it? There's lots of boots like these. You said three guys. There's only two of us. Frank's our friend, mister. And you knew all about him. Where he went and when. Nino, don't say nothing, Ernie. What are you, dumb, mister? You talk like a man with a paper head. You did it, didn't you, Nino? You gotta be kidding. You walk in here all alone, you tell us we killed somebody. You gotta be kidding. In our own house, he tells us. What's taking you guys so... <laughs> You got all the answers now, mister. What are you going to do with them? Don't mess them up here, Nino. No. I know a nice, quiet place. Let's take them there. You better get up that fire escape. Nino said. 
but i guess i figured you wouldn't be far behind